Some parents of special needs students claim their children are being mistreated in school, but they're not getting answers from school staff. Now legislation is being introduced to put cameras in classrooms with special needs students. The I-team's Vanessa Murphy digs deeper to find out why the issue is so controversial. Six-year-old Eaker has special needs. He's nonverbal. So when he came home from school with injuries like these, he couldn't tell his dad, Francisco Flores, what happened. So you still don't know about the wound on the arm? Mm -mm. You still don't know what happened about him losing a tooth? Mm. And you still don't know what those two marks are on his back? No. Over the past six months, the abuse wasn't just one time. The I team has interviewed several parents. There's two different stories. With the same problem. I was feel guilty because I was taking her to school and I don't know that she was going to be safe. Their children with special needs like autism can't express what's happening at school. The parents suspect they're being mistreated and they're not getting answers from staff. I think it's, it's time. State Senator Scott Hammond wants cameras in classrooms. The Republican is co-sponsoring a bill with State Senator Mo Dennis, a Democrat, to make it a requirement in public school classes where more than 50 percent of the students have special needs. A similar bill was introduced in 2017, but it was never even voted on. Perhaps it was politics and perhaps it was just, you know, some people were worried about the cost, but we'll find out come this session. Um, other than that, I don't know what, uh, what, what it could have prevented it because it's needed, it's necessary now. Senator Hammond's so bill does not yet it. specify a it's cost. We do have concerns about unfunded mandates and we know that uh, cameras in classrooms will cost millions of dollars. Kirsten Searer is a spokeswoman for the Clark County School District. We also have some legal concerns as well because it's not just about the one student in concern. There's uh, privacy concerns for the staff members in the classroom, for the other students in the classroom. Marianne Lanuti is an attorney who has represented families of special needs students. In my opinion, the only thing that the school district is protecting is themselves. The I-Team has learned since 2015 alone, CCSD has spent more than $1.9 million on lawsuits the district has settled involving special needs students. Those are taxpayer dollars. Could the cost be offset with litigation and cameras? Well, I, I think that's something that we could look at, but I think that you can't underestimate the cost of these cameras. Searer acknowledges the district is seeing an increase in litigation surrounding special needs students. I think even with, uh, say, a camera in a classroom, uh, one could argue that maybe the cost would be even higher because a camera might reveal things in litigation that has some kind of financial value to it. John Velardita is the executive director of the Clark County Education Association, which represents teachers. He suggests using money that would pay for cameras to instead hire more special ed teachers. And he has three main concerns about the legislation. Privacy issue, due process issue, and a fiscal impact. If everything is happening in the classroom as it should be, what's the problem with having the cameras? Well, one, I think you should ask a parent, because I think we've heard loud and clear from parents that they don't want their child being videotaped without their permission. But parents we talked with do want cameras. What would you say to parents of children who are nonverbal and can't speak about what may have happened to them in, at school who say having these cameras is a no-brainer? I think they have a good point. It's very hard to, to disagree with them. Both the union and the district say they're open to talking about cameras in special needs classrooms, but they also admit it's an idea that is controversial. To these parents, though, cameras mean one thing, safety for their children. Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. The I-Team also reached out to the Nevada State Education Association Union to get its take. It represents school staff. We received no response. CCSD did just inform us this evening the district is estimating the cost of the cameras in special needs classrooms to be $12.5 million on average per school year. Are children being kept in an enclosed area to keep them under control in a valley school? One lawyer refers to it as a hot box. And tonight, some parents are raising questions about Variety School, a school in the district for students with special needs. The I-Team's Vanessa Murphy is getting answers. 
Chantel Myers says a trip to pick up her son Christian from Variety, a school for special needs students. Just talking about it brings, you know, makes me upset again. Led to a revelation from staff about an incident. They told him to go outside to calm down. And it was in, in July. This is where Myers claims staff placed her son after he became frustrated with a classroom exercise. My attorney likes to call it a hot box. It's an enclosed area with no air conditioning and a door leading to the classroom. It's just hard material. There's nothing soft out there. Everything is hard. Let's race. Christian is autistic. Go, go, go. Whoa. When he gets upset. He likes to run into walls. And nonverbal. She said, well, we left him out there. And I was like, alone? And she said, yes, alone. And I said, how long was he out there? And she said, approximately 10 minutes. And he also had an accident in his pants. Um, when he was outside. According to its website, Variety is aimed at ensuring the least restrictive environment through positive behavioral intervention. Just him being out there for 10 minutes and the fact that they were they were telling me this, that my son was out in this area, you know, it was 105 degrees outside. I don't know if she was looking, you know, watching through the, the window and he could see in the window. I don't know. It just breaks my heart to even think about it. Meyer says through an individualized education plan or IEP, school staff was forbidden from placing Christian in the so-called hot box again. She provided this document to the I team, which states the student will be provided an appropriate cool down area within the school building, not the outside patio. But one year later, Myers describes a disturbing visit to the classroom. I saw them um, struggling with a little boy. He was probably like 50 pounds. I mean, small little thing. And they put him outside and shut the door. And I was like, I can't believe that this is happening right in front of my face. She says it was another hot day. I got back into my car after I left there and I just broke down crying and I looked at the temperature on my car it was 103 degrees. Christian now attends a different school, but Myers took her concerns about variety to the Nevada Department of Education with attorney Marianne Lanuti. A lot of parents have a lot of concerns that are not being answered. The I team dug deeper into Variety School. We requested the number of interventions, which includes when students are restrained or separated for behavioral issues. From August through December of 2018 alone, 733 pages worth in a school with 154 students. We also tracked down salaries. For classroom aides, we calculated an average salary of just more than $27,000, including overtime. For teachers, less than 49000 Staff at Variety frequently report punches, headbutts, and bites from students. According to district spokeswoman Kirsten Searer, special needs staff generally make the same salary as other teachers. She tells us the only extra training to work with special needs students is a mandatory video. When we requested an interview with school superintendent Dr. Jesus Jara, Searer provided an interview. We know that our nonverbal kids are, are some of our most vulnerable kids. Uh, I think that Dr. Jara has made it clear that he wants to serve the needs of every student. A school district spokesman says Variety has a calming area or padded room and another short-term support classroom for students in crisis. And, quote, administration has since directed staff that the patio area is only to be used when a student initiates access to this area, unquote and students are not placed there. He describes the outdoor patio as an extension of the classroom and learning environment. So that's a separate... Hi. But to this mom, it looked more like a punishment. I think administration is turning a blind eye, yes. And I think a lot of parents aren't aware that it's even happening. Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. Now, there is a bill to introduce cameras in special needs classrooms under review right now at the Nevada legislative session. Chantel Meyer says she supports it. The I-team took a closer look at the issue earlier on this month. You can find that story on our website at lasvegasnow.com. A recent 8 News Now story caught the attention of one lawmaker, and now she's taking her concerns to the nation's capital. The I-team shed light on questions about a school for students with special needs and whether staff is secluding some children in an outdoor area. The I-team's Vanessa Murphy has the update. Each person, each Chantel person Meyer's person voice is being heard in Washington, D.C. I think administration is turning a blind eye, yes. Yeah. And I think a lot of parents aren't aware that it's even happening. Let's race. 
Go, go, go. Whoa. The I team shared her story a little more than a week ago. Her autistic son Christian is nonverbal and had previously attended Variety, a school for special needs students in Las Vegas. Myers claims Christian was placed in this outdoor enclosure after he became frustrated with a classroom exercise on a day when it was 105 degrees. My attorney likes to call it a hot box. Are children being kept in an enclosed area to keep them under control in a valley school? After One seeing the I team story, my heart breaks for her. Congresswoman Susie Lee brought the concerns to a national spotlight during a committee hearing on restraints and seclusions in schools. In Las Vegas, we had uh, an incredibly troubling incident. As the I team previously reported, the Clark County School District refers to this as a patio area. And a spokesman said, quote, administration has since directed staff that the patio area is only to be used when a student initiates access. Could we see legislation at the federal level to prevent something like you saw in our story with that enclosure? Yeah, you know, first of all, Nevada is a state that does have regulations about it. And so, um, but definitely, I mean, that was, this was a hearing uh, that is, I think, the first step towards us drafting up potential legislation, uh, Keep Our Schools Safe Act, which will provide national standards around this incredibly important issue. Lee tells the I team the goal is not only to keep students safe, but also to make sure educators have the tools they need. According to a district spokeswoman, the only additional training required for special needs staff at CCSD is a video. Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. Chantal Myers was contacted by a school staff member at Variety School after the I-Team story aired, and she was told an investigation was opened. Thanks for joining us tonight at 6. I'm Christiane Klein. And I'm Denise Valdez. Nevada lawmakers are considering putting cameras into classrooms with special needs students. Now, this is a story that the I-Team has been following as parents share their experiences. Vanessa Murphy is here with this latest update and what could happen next. Vanessa? Yeah, some parents and advocates call it a no-brainer, as you mentioned putting cameras in classrooms with special needs students. Many of this, these children are autistic and nonverbal, meaning they can't tell their parents what may have happened to them in school, but not everyone is on board with this proposed law. We need to protect our children. Parent after parent sharing their stories with the Senate Education Committee. Unfortunately, as of right now, there's been no accountability and he's been unable to express how the injuries are occurring. They're urging lawmakers to pass a bill which would require public schools to put cameras in classrooms where more than 50 percent of the students have special needs because these mothers have something in common. Their children can't express themselves. And Senator Scott Hammond, a Republican who's co sponsoring the bill with Senator Mo Dennis, a Democrat, presented troubling statistics at this hearing Friday. In Clark County alone, there were 127 investigations of school employee on student abuse in the 2017 to 2018 school year, most of them to special needs students. 14 were confirmed to be abuse. Something's happened to them at school and they can't explain to their parents how that bruise got there or how this happened. And sometimes it's an, it can be very innocent and that's, that's kind of the, the, the rationale for this bill. The Nevada Department of Education and the Clark County Education Association claim they're neutral on the bill. The CCEA, which is a union representing CCSD teachers, suggests instead using money to train special needs staff. A Clark County School District spokeswoman previously told the I-Team money is a concern. The district estimates the cost at nearly $26 million over the first two years to install and operate cameras, mainly because of construction of telecommunications and equipment rooms. But when a similar bill was introduced last legislative session, which did not pass, the estimate was $165,000. I thought about that and I said, well, how could it jump? How could it have such a massive jump for something that's the same? 
A mother who claims her child was placed in seclusion in the heat also testified Friday. It's a story the I team first broke, and it got the attention of Congresswoman Susie Lee, who brought those concerns to Capitol Hill last week. So what's unfolding here in Nevada is a national concern. By the way, the next step for this bill, a work session where lawmakers can make changes to the proposed bill and then possibly a vote on whether this will move forward. Back to you. A father is fighting to equip his autistic son with a listening device in a valley school, but the Clark County School District isn't on board. The I-team's Vanessa Murphy first broke this story back in December and is here live in studio with the most recent update you will only see on 8 News Now. Brian, this fight has continued since December, and now a hearing master will decide the future of the student and whether his parents can equip him with a listening device. That hearing will happen over the next two days, and the decision won't just affect this one student, since privacy is part of the issue here. It's a constant worry. Joshua Borer says he just wants to make sure his son JJ is safe at school. The six-year-old is autistic and nonverbal. And last May, when a teacher hurt him at Harmon Elementary, according to police, JJ wasn't able to tell his parents. They learned because of an investigation. It just kind of snowballed from there as we found, we got the arrest report and we talked to detectives. Um, we found out that he was actually hit with a stick. Melody Carter agreed to a plea deal. She no longer works for the Clark County School District. But Laura worries JJ will run away from his new school, Farron Elementary, because he's still traumatized. And he wants to make sure JJ isn't mistreated or abused again. He wants to equip him with angel sense. Simply place a device in your child's backpack. It's a device with GPS to track where JJ is, and it would give Warrer the ability to listen to what's happening around JJ. According to Warrer and his attorney, Greg Hubley, the Clark County School District will allow Angel Sense for GPS, but not to listen in. The district cites privacy issues. The capability and the uh, allowing them to be able to listen in to what goes on around JJ is the only way that we're going to be able to make sure that he is in a position where he's able to get the education that he's entitled to. On Tuesday, a hearing master will hear testimony on the argument, CCSD versus representatives for JJ. They have nowhere else to turn. We reached out to the Clark County School District and a spokesman said the district could not comment on pending litigation. We have the time and location for that hearing, which starts tomorrow on our website at lasvegasnow.com in case you'd like to go. And by the way, the I-team has been reporting on a proposed law to put cameras in classrooms with special needs students. Lawmakers are considering that right now. The Nevada legislature is deciding whether cameras should be put inside classrooms with special needs students. But what about the cameras that already exist inside schools? The I-Team discovered access to footage is a challenge for parents and guardians. Vanessa Murphy has this exclusive story you'll only see here on 8 News Now. Yeah, oh, from the theater when we went to the movies. Did the whole help them? I don't remember this movie. Wendy Newtick says her grandson Matthew was bullied at school. I couldn't tell exactly where he's bleeding from. Slapped so hard. It was his nose and his mouth. She took him to the hospital. The 12 year old is autistic, and according to documents provided to the I team by Newtick, the other child who also has special needs was investigated by the Clark County School District Police for battery. According to a document, the incident happened in the 8th grade hallway. A district spokesman says there are cameras in certain areas of the school, but this incident wasn't caught on video. Newtick claims she was told she couldn't view any footage to see for herself. What's the reason you were given for not being able to view the video? Um, that it would require a subpoena that FER FERPA, I believe, is kind of like HIPAA and it protects the other students in the video. The I team filed a formal request. The response video from that February time frame doesn't exist anymore. Gabriel Bustamantes faced a similar struggle. The principal of the school contacted my wife and said she was investigating this other issue and noticed in the background something peculiar happening with Andrew and another teacher. His son Andy is also autistic. Bustamantes hired attorney Marianne Lanuti 
and eventually obtained this video where a staffer appears to toss something to get Andy to follow. Like they were playing fetch with my son. But he tells the I team there's another video which the district refused to show him. We were told we can't see the video. It's proprietary information uh, because there's other kids in the video and there's staff members and privacy issues involved. When the I team requested that video from last September, the district refused to release it, citing privacy concerns. Remember, this is video from a public school. Bustamantes continued his fight, and he did eventually see that second video, but he says he is not permitted to speak about it. He also placed his son in a private school. Red flag after red flag, and then as we, like I said, as we asked for more information, radio silence. We were completely cut off. We were put up with barriers. Matthew still attends Cram Middle School. Are they going to be able to protect him? Newtick says the other student was removed but is now back. It's heart-wrenching. You know, you work so hard to get them in the right place, in the right time, so they can hopefully be successful in life. To know that no matter how hard you try and how hard you fight, you just don't have the avenues to do everything to protect them. A CCSD spokesman would only comment on Matthew Newtick's situation. He said school administration is aware of the matter and taking this incident seriously. We have the full statement on our website at lasvegasnow.com. Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. Two Las Vegas parents found out they will not be allowed to send their son to school with a listening device. Now, 8 News Now first reported that decision yesterday. This is a story that the I-team first told you about and has been following. Vanessa Murphy has more on the decision and why it's controversial. Since we're talking about education, let's go through this series of events on the board. A special needs student was abused. He was then moved to a new school, but issues continued and the district failed to notify the parents about those problems. So there was abuse, new school, continued failures. The parents want to send the student to school with a listening device called Angel Sense so they can hear what's happening inside the classroom, but a hearing master said no. Six-year-old J.J. Warrer is autistic and nonverbal. In 2018, his parents learned his teacher, Melody Carter, was arrested for hitting J.J. with a stick at Harmon Elementary School. She's no longer a teacher and agreed to a plea deal. J.J. has moved to Farron Elementary. His parents say he runs away at school because he's traumatized. The Clark County School District admits failing to notify J.J.'s parents about issues J.J.'s facing at that school. Angel Sense also has GPS, so it would allow his parents to listen in and track him. Since the district would not allow JJ to wear Angel Sense, citing privacy issues, both sides presented arguments to a hearing master. 8 News Now had a camera there. I'm asking you if JJ is being harmed and abused, and you just, I thought you just said they probably wouldn't report on themselves. Correct. And JJ's nonverbal. Correct. Do you think Angel Sense might be important then? I don't know what Angel Sense, and I don't think I'm the one to qualify to say whether it's allowed or not allowed. The hearing master's decision is not what JJ's parents had hoped for. Again, they will not be allowed to send JJ to school with Angel Sense, even though the hearing master ruled the district did make mistakes and failed to notify the parents about issues. JJ's teachers will now be required to do four more hours of training on how to deal with special needs students. Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. And right now, Nevada lawmakers are considering a bill which would require public schools to install cameras in classrooms where more than half of the students have special needs. A woman accused of hurting children in the Clark County School District is now teaching in Nye County. And it turns out the taxpayers are on the hook for hundreds of thousands of dollars while at least two student, well, while at least two lawsuits are underway. And the I-Team tracked down video connected to a school investigation and Vanessa Murphy shows how the teacher's record may have fallen through the cracks. Who has the 
This is video from a Clark County School District police officer's body camera. He's investigating claims against a teacher at Kirk Adams Elementary School in March of 2017. The interview is with another teacher who says she's a witness. I witnessed the teacher with her feet roughly on top of her student in like a kicking manner. And then I witnessed her take her hand and push his head down towards the ground. The teacher being investigated is Casey Glass. Her aide gives a different story. She says she and Glass were trying to calm the student down. He has special needs, he's nonverbal, and the aide says the child was trying to attack Glass. But I had him on this side, and I'm just trying to. He's trying to scratch me, but I have him, and I'm like, calm down, trying to talk to him to calm down, cool uh -huh. down. So I'm not really seeing what he's trying to do with his other hand, because she has it on the other side. So I wasn't really paying attention. She reveals glass would withhold food as punishment. That's called aversive intervention, and it's not allowed. Is that normal to take food away from a student that's acting up? Usually what she does is she takes it away, but she gives it back. How has she been in the past with her students? Um, I've made a complaint before about how I've seen her treat a student before. According to court records, the incident both witnesses were interviewed about was caught on school surveillance video. Is that video going to show her doing everything professionally? I sure hope so. Like I said, I was more focused on trying to get him off her. Uh -huh. and the rest of the other kids. Is it going to show you doing everything professionally? Oh, yeah. But records show the officer determined probable cause exists to charge Glass with battery using willful and unlawful force and violence upon an autistic nonverbal special needs child. He called Glass's actions degrading, terrorizing, and emotionally traumatic and gave the case to the Clark County District Attorney's Office so Glass would be charged. That never happened, and now Glass is teaching again. The IT may have uncovered why. We spoke to District Attorney Steve Wolfson. In a phone call, he said his office requested more information from school police and never received it. So the case didn't move forward and the records were destroyed per Clark County policy. Glass resigned from CCSD and is now teaching at Floyd Elementary in Nye County. The I-team reached out to the superintendent there. In an email, he confirmed she was hired for the 2017-2018 school year and a background check is done on all employees in addition to the Nevada Department of Education screenings. Glass still has a teaching license. The I-team reached out to the Department of Education. A spokesman emailed us saying the department has not received any information on Glass, but we are happy to look into allegations that have been provided by KLAS. The I-team also tried to get Glass's side of the story. We tracked down this Las Vegas address. Hi, we're looking for Casey Glass. When we rang the bell, the blinds and garage door closed. But as we were leaving, a man opened the door and said he'd call security. Can Casey Glass talk to us? Did she abuse kids? Two families, including the family of the child at the center of these videos, are suing Casey Glass, the Clark County School District, and school staff. According to information obtained by the I-Team, the district has spent nearly $431,000 on lawyers defending those lawsuits so far. The I-Team also requested their surveillance footage of the incident referred to in these videos. The district refused to release it, claiming the surveillance system doesn't have the capability to redact or blur images of students and staff, so the public won't be given the opportunity to see the video for themselves. The student was like crawling on the floor and her feet were basically like on top of him like this. Okay. And then he was his head and she pushed him away. I just remember her doing this. Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. We did ask the school district about the investigation by CCSD police and were told by a spokesman that they do not comment on pending lawsuits. A child's leg is broken on a school bus and it's all caught on camera, but a Valley mother says the Clark County School District wouldn't let her see the video. The I-Team's Vanessa Murphy has an exclusive interview with the family and we do want to warn you, the images in, in this story are difficult to see. This footage shows how Javes Hernandez's leg was broken. 
But the journey to get this video, which reveals the truth, was painstakingly long and emotional for the child's family. We've cried one too many times over this book. Today, Javez is eight years old, autistic and unable to speak. On February 1st, 2016, he was four. Andrea Esquivel says she sent him to school on a special needs bus and later received a call. Her son's leg was swollen. That they didn't know what had happened and if we had any idea if we could go down to the school. When she and her husband arrived, one of the nurses had already called 911. She says Javez was crying in pain. She provided the I team with this photo. We were asking questions, you know, what had happened, and they were asking questions as if we knew what had happened. Like, no, he was fine in the morning. Then after an x-ray at Sunrise Hospital. The doctor gave us the news. It's a spiral fracture. And that um, he said that it seems as if someone had broken his leg on purpose. That's when she says Metro Police and Child Protective Services stepped in. And we come to find out that they went to blame us. She provided this police report which lists the parents as suspects. She says she and her husband were separated and interrogated and she claims investigators threatened to break up her family of six. Three of the kids are autistic. Both CPS and police threatened my husband with immigration. They threatened that, you know, if you don't, if you don't um, say that you or your wife did this, they, then we're going to arrest you guys and you're going to be deported back to Mexico. When CPS uh, threatened um, to take our kids away, that's when I lost it. A couple of days later, Esquivel says a detective called her to say school bus video revealed another student broke her son's leg. So she asked the Clark County School District for the footage. What was their answer? No, that they, they can't due to privacy. That's when she turned to a lawyer and sued CCSD. More than one year later, through court proceedings, the family received access to the video. And we want to warn you, it's tough to watch and listen to. You will hear the snap of the child's leg breaking. Javez cries and the child who broke his leg tells the bus driver. Anyway, anybody can call Swainston. I'm going to put them up in the front and they can go ahead and come out now and bring the wheelchair. Um, for her, Valencia, I don't have her last name. It's unclear how long Javez suffered with a broken leg before the bus stopped at school. The lawsuit alleges the bus driver forced Javez to walk off the bus, and when he collapsed, he made him walk again. You know, we only thought that, you know, he was, he's, that, 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 he must have felt hopeless. She says it took three months for Javez to recover. For a nonverbal boy with so much energy, keeping him bedridden was a challenge. Esquivel says he doesn't walk the same. She provided documents which show the family did get a $65,000 settlement from CCSD in March. It appears a law firm took half. She says the other half is in a trust fund for Javez, but she insists this isn't about money. She wants CCSD to have an aid on every special needs bus. If there would have been a bus aid in the first place, then that just would have never happened. And that boy would have been buckled in. The I team reached out to CCSD to get answers about why the district wouldn't let Esquivel see the video. A spokesman said distributing it could be a violation of federal law. The district has argued previously showing other kids' faces violated privacy. So we asked if the district has technology to blur their faces. 
the response? We're looking into it. Court documents identify this bus driver as Pat Soroki. The spokesman said there is a current bus driver with that name. The spokesman also said the district is unable to discuss individual student matters. So we don't know if the student who broke Javez's leg or the bus driver were disciplined. What do you say to your child when something like this happens? Uh, that's the thing that we can't, even though we try because we want him to understand right now, I just hope, I hope he doesn't remember. Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. As Vanessa reported, Andrea Esquivel says her husband was threatened with deportation. Andrea says she is an American citizen, but told the I-team at the time her husband had not yet applied for U.S. citizenship. But after that, he did. They say currently his status is pending. New video tonight at the center of a lawsuit filed against a teacher. It's an update to an exclusive story the I-Team first brought you about allegations she abused a special needs student. The I-Team's Vanessa Murphy now has footage the Clark County School District refused to release. Now we want to warn you, the video is of a sensitive nature. The I-Team has been trying to obtain video of the incident in question, but the Clark County School District would not release it citing privacy issues. But attorneys for the child's family obtained the video and filed it in court today. Now it's evidence at the center of a lawsuit. The student was like crawling on the floor and her feet were basically like on top of him like this. Okay. And then he was his head and she pushed him away. A teacher explains what she saw in an interview with Clark County School District Police. This is in March 2017 at Kirk Adams Elementary School. Teacher Casey Glass enters the cafeteria with students. Watch her interaction with this child who has special needs. He is autistic and nonverbal, meaning he doesn't speak. Later, he gets up and she appears to take his food away. Then Glass and the aide appear to take the rest of the food away. He gets up again and they appear to restrain him. The time noted, 9 a.m. Glass stays close and pushes his table more than once, even with her foot. She does it repeatedly as she continues to interact with him and she appears to taunt him. Then a palm to his head. Glass moves the table. Then see what happens at 9.03. An interaction lasting more than 30 seconds with the child on the floor, Glass's foot involved, and more. Minutes later, with a packed cafeteria, the child is on the ground, eventually crawling. How has she been in the past with her students? Um, I've made a complaint before about how I've seen her treat a student before. This is how the aide describes what happened. So when I had him on this side, and I'm just trying to, he's trying to scratch me, but I have him, and I'm like, calm down, trying to talk to him to calm down, cool uh -huh. down. So I'm not really seeing what he's trying to do with his other hand, because she has it on the other side, but I wasn't really paying attention. Is that normal to take food away from a student that's acting up? Usually what she does is she takes it away, but she gives it back. Withholding food as punishment is aversive intervention, which is against the law. Is that video going to show her doing everything professionally? I sure hope so. Like I said, I was more focused on trying to get him out of her uh -huh. and the rest of the other kids. Is it going to show you doing everything professionally? Oh, yeah. The Clark County School District Police recommended charging Glass and sent her case to the district attorney. Steve Wolfson told the I-Team his office requested more information from school police and never received it, so the case didn't move forward and the records were destroyed per Clark County policy. Glass resigned from CCSD and according to state records, she still has a teaching license and is working with students with special needs at Floyd Elementary School in Nye County. Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. It appears the aid in the video still works, though, at CCSD. We reached out to the district this afternoon, and it responded by saying it doesn't comment on pending litigation. There is also a second lawsuit filed by another family against Casey Glass and the school district.
parents of children with developmental disabilities are taking action, connecting after seeing some of the stories right here on 8 News Now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Denise Valdez. A conference in its fifth year just wrapped up this afternoon, but families have more of the knowledge they need to advocate for their loved ones. The I-Team's Vanessa Murphy has this story from Palace Station. Some of the parents here connected after the I-Team stories aired. They realize they're not alone and they are empowering themselves and each other to try to make sure their children who have special needs get the resources and education they should. I'm the voice of my child. Olivia Espinoza's son Matthew is 14 years old, autistic and nonverbal. Oh, Just give me a kiss. <laughs> I love you so much. She's the founder of Azul Blue, United by Autism, which connects parents of children with special needs. She organized this conference with the help of the Nevada Governor's Council on Developmental Disabilities. We need to be together for a better system and, of course, for the best of our children. And that system that keeps coming up here is the Clark County School District. We are not giving up until this little thing is going to be approved for CCSD. From a mother who's fighting to equip her nonverbal daughter with a listening device at school. I just felt that I couldn't stay quiet and my son, him being nonverbal, he couldn't tell us. To another mom who had to fight to view video of her nonverbal child on a school bus, which revealed another child broke his leg. For community. We got to start helping each other and we got to, we can do it together. To the advocates who help families of children with special needs. Eventually, you build a relationship. This conference is about teaming up, building a support system together, and teaching families how to advocate for their loved ones with developmental disabilities. We need to do something. We have more information about Azul Blue at 8newsnow.com. In Las Vegas, Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. Now also at today's conference, Vanessa was presented an award for giving a voice to the voiceless. In reference to her reports on issues families of children with special needs face, you can watch more of her stories on our website, 8newsnow.com. Should a family be allowed to equip their child with a listening device in school, a hearing master will have to make that decision. And this week, a hearing is underway. The IT first broke this story, and Vanessa Murphy is here now with more. Denise and Brian, many families of children with special needs tell me a listening device is necessary since some of the students are nonverbal, so they can't express whether they're being mistreated or abused. The Clark County School District argues it violates privacy of other students even though there are already cameras in some areas of school and school buses. Here's a look at day one of this due process hearing. It's the parents of Gia Blessing, a student with autism who cannot speak versus CCSD. The I-team has visited the family's home where they showed us Angel Sense, the listening and tracking device they want to send her to school with. They say the district is not communicating with them about Gia's education or troubles in school and on the bus. Gia's mother says she's already arguing not just for Gia, but for other students like her. So that way the parents has a type of communication with their kids, even at the school, and they feel more like a peace of mind like I do when they have this device with them. Some parents showed up to voice their support and to call attention to the mistreatment and in some cases abuse of their children with special needs. They are also calling out CCSD for not giving some students the resources they need. Coming up at 6, we'll have more on this story. Also, you may remember another family went through a due process hearing a few months ago because they wanted to send their nonverbal son to school with Angel Sense. There was a different hearing master for their case but he ruled no, the parents could not use that device. Denise and Brian. The fight to allow parents to equip their children with a listening device in public schools continues. A hearing is happening this week for one family. Thank you so much for joining us at 6. I'm Kirsten Joyce. And I'm Denise Valdez. Other families are rallying to support them. The I-Team has been leading coverage of issues like this for some time, and Vanessa Murphy has their story. Gia Blessing's family told the I-Team in May they would continue to fight to send her to school with a listening device called Angel Sense. Give me candy bars in jail, I don't care. 
because for the same reason... For Gia the has autism and speaks just a few words, so she can't express what's happening in school. I don't trust anybody at this point. This week, they are at a hearing in a room full of CCSD staff, lawyers, and a hearing master who will make the final decision. The purpose of this hearing is that Gia is nonverbal and that the parents were excluded in participating in her educational uh, process. The Blessings want permission to use Angel Sense, better communication from staff about Gia's progress and challenges, and they're requesting a one-on-one -on -one aid which they say would be paid for by their insurance. The district claims Gia is progressing in school and Angel Sense violates other students' privacy. The remedies that we're requesting have very uh, little financial impact and the school district is always saying that you know it's a money issue and the cost of this hearing is is exorbitant it isn't tremendous and while the hearing kicked off inside this building supporters and other parents of children who have special needs held a press conference outside that's why we're here to let it know to CCSD we need cameras in the room several parents he has been injured under the care of the CS CCSD uh, a few times already. Shared their stories. You're able to buy family silence, but you claim that you don't have the money to provide safe environments for our kids. The common theme, they say their children need a voice and they're not getting it in school. Tanya Blessing says her fight to equip Gia with angel sense isn't only for her daughter. So that way the parents has a type of communication with their kids, even at the school, and they feel more like a peace of mind like I do when they have this device with them. Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. Earlier this year, another family went through the same type of hearing to send their child to school with angel sense. A hearing master, however, ruled no. Denise? Video from a Clark County School District school bus is at the center of a disagreement. Parents of a child with special needs are facing off now against the district. And the parents claim the district can't be trusted. They say the video you're about to see is one reason why. The ITN's Vanessa Murphy joins us with more on this developing story. Vanessa. Well, the parents of the child with special needs say one thing, the Clark County School District says another, and now a hearing master will have the final say. Shut up. No, come on, let's go. This is an incident from May 2nd on a Clark County School District bus. Another child appears to try to hit Gia Blessing with a sippy cup several times. Gia is a fourth grader who is autistic and nonverbal. The bus driver gets involved. Gia is upset. The driver comforts her. Minutes later, her mother shows up. Who's hitting her? Who's doing something on her? Oh, nobody was hitting her. Yeah, I'm listening. No, 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 Tanya Blessing reveals she heard her daughter in trouble because she sent Gia to school with Angel Sense, a listening device. My daughter was screaming and saying no, no. In this May interview, Tanya Blessing told the I-Team Gia could not return to school with Angel Sense because the district claims it violates student privacy. She said CCSD also refused to show her surveillance video from the bus. After our story aired, CCSD did show the family and their attorney the video, but wouldn't give them a copy. The next time they'd see that footage, at this due process hearing this week. The family is fighting for permission to send Gia to school with Angel Sense and for more transparency from the district. One example, how much of a struggle it was to get this video. And the family still even has questions about its authenticity. It appears no formal action was taken by CCSD after this bus incident. By law, bullying must be reported by school staff. So then ultimately, did you see what you would consider any bullying when we watched the video? Yes, that could be considered bullying. 
The hearing master will likely make a decision by November. There is expected to be an audit at the Clark County School District. It's scheduled to start in November. A spokesman tells me it will include a review of special needs education. Back to you. Imagine you're a parent whose child was hurt and you learn there's video showing how it happened. You'd want to see it to gather facts, right? Well, parent after parent told the I-team the Clark County School District refuses to show them video of incidents involving their children. And the district isn't being transparent with our I-team either. Vanessa Murphy has the ex exclusive story that you'll only see here on 8 News Now. Hola. Paul Benza has special needs. He was a student at Variety School at the Clark County School District until his mother Claudia says he didn't want to go back. This is what happened to Paul's arm on a school bus the morning of August 23rd. I feel very bad for my son because he's, you see, my, he's so sweet, he's very nice. Benza says she learned there is video of how Paul was hurt on the school bus, but both school police and school staff have never let her see it. I tried looking for help, see the video. Nobody helped me. So Benza reached out to the I team. We filed a request with CCSD for the video. By law, they need to provide it in a timely manner. But a representative requested a couple of time extensions so they could redact information, like blur the faces of students and employees. This is what we received. The video is blurred so much, you can't see what happened. But why not see I'm the mother I want to see what happened with my son? What we do have is this CCSD police report, which reveals what the footage shows. Another student had a small, sharp object and poked and scratched Paul's arm throughout the bus ride while there were two aides on the bus. One was helping another student. The other was sitting in the front of the bus and didn't see what was happening. For me, the, resp the responsibility now for what happened with my son is the aide. So you, if you have two aid in the bus, how nobody know what happened. The report states due to the other student's disability, he does not have the cognitive ability to be charged with a crime. Case closed, but not for this family. He is scared um, at the school, he no one. He tell me every day, no school, mama, please, no school. More than two months later, Benza says this video we received will be the only video she will have seen. And right now, to give you an example of how we redact video to blur faces, I'm standing in our newsroom where you can see my coworkers' faces. Our photojournalists can take the video and edit it. And now, while you can't see their faces, you can still see what's happening. No need to blur the entire image. That's if the goal is transparency. In Las Vegas, Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. A mother who was awarded settlement money from the Clark County School District is breaking her silence only to the 8 News Now I team. Now, this stems from allegations of abuse by a teacher and a lawsuit which followed. The I team's Vanessa Murphy is here with this exclusive story. Denise and Brian, we're talking about a $1.2 million settlement divided between three families. So essentially taxpayers are footing the bill for the way school officials handle, handled reported abuse of students by a teacher. Where is your pencil, Matthew? This is Olivia Espinoza's okay. son, Matthew. Tell me, Matthew. He's 14 years old, autistic Matthew. and nonverbal. Look at me. Do you want to say hi? In 2015, Espinoza learned Matthew had been abused by his teacher in school. Here's a clip from a news conference parents held that year. I think this is not okay for us as parents. Why? A series of events led to a lawsuit. Three families, including the Espinozas, claimed the Clark County School District put their children with special needs in harm's way by keeping the students in teacher James Doran's classroom even after other school staffers reported abuse by Doran. During the process, we noticed that many people knew it, but they were in silence. 
An affidavit reveals three different complaints at Forbes Elementary. An assistant teacher reporting to police she witnessed Doran slap a child's hands. Another teacher reporting Doran threw a boy into a beanbag. And a third assistant reporting Doran grabbed a boy's hands and threw them down forcefully. Parents learned about Doran's arrest on TV. I knew it by the news. And um, that was uh, physically and emotional, emotional abuse. Here's what the lawsuit alleges. Doran used aversive intervention. That's physical or mental abuse used to punish a child, which is against the law. In May of 2015, parents of two children say they did receive reports Doran used aversive intervention on the students, but the district minimized what really happened and never told them a criminal investigation into allegations of abuse was happening. On July 14, 2015, a criminal complaint was filed against Doran. But he remained in the classroom for six weeks until his arrest on August 26th. In the beginning, the people, they didn't believe in us. They say they just want money. And that is not true. In February of this year, the Clark County School Board approved a settlement for all three families to receive $400,000. Doran pleaded guilty to one count of battery in 2016 and received a suspended six-month jail sentence, completed impulse control counseling, and was ordered to stay away from all schools. We got the justice. And James Doran went on to teach at another school district in New York. Tomorrow on 8 News Now, the I-Team investigates how that could happen. Back to you. Well, tonight, the I-Team brings you the story of one Las Vegas mother who pursued a fight against the Clark County School District. And as the I-Team's Vanessa Murphy reports now, she wants to help other parents with their struggles. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, the I-Team has investigated the process some parents have to go through to get answers from the Clark County School District. Oftentimes, they need to hire attorneys to get the answers and results they need or want, especially if their children have special needs. But one mom took this on herself. Two. Grayson Batista was having a tough time at Frias Elementary School. His mother Diana says the seven-year-old has autism. And while he can speak, expressing his thoughts can be a challenge. He was coming home with injuries and black and blue marks and things that um, the school staff said that they couldn't explain and I didn't know where they were coming from. She tells the I-team this may have been the final straw. I was in shock. <laughs> Incomplete. I couldn't believe that. I've never seen anything like it. I was in complete shock looking at his head. Staff informed her Grayson fell on the playground. She pressed the district for answers about multiple incidents and pushed for school records. When she received them, she found some allegations Grayson was the aggressor. You know, I had no idea that there were all of these allegations all over my son's files in and complete shock because it was the complete opposite of everything I was being told. She complained to the Nevada Department of Education requesting a due process hearing. I had enough support from the right people that they said you can do this. She learned laws. A lot of Googling and looking up um, IDEA laws. And prepared for months. There were many days that I don't want to cry. Many days that I had that wanting to give up and I my son meant more to me than giving up, and I refused to give up, no matter how tired I was. Finally, she received this settlement agreement dated September 9th. The district agrees to provide special services for Grayson, for school staff to meet with his parents regularly, and to expunge records, three from incidents where Grayson is listed as the problem. For me to get all of that, um, Obviously, and the settlement was huge for us, and it just made it worth it. I was in complete shock. I couldn't believe it. The I-team reached out to CCSD about Batista's settlement. A spokesman said the district doesn't comment on individual student matters. Grayson no longer attends Frias Elementary. He's now at Stuckey, where Batista says he's doing well. She's also planning to help other parents get results from CCSD for their children with special needs. It's been, I mean, just a blessing in disguise. 
And the I-Team has been reporting on challenges children with special needs face in school. You can watch other stories we've done at 8newsnow.com. Back to you. A mother of a child with autism is upset with that her son was placed in handcuffs at school. Now, the IT first brought you an exclusive interview with her about a settlement that she was awarded from CCSD. As the I-Team's Vanessa Murphy reports, just as the family was ready to move on, another setback. This is how Olivia Espinoza found her son Matthew at Sierra Vista High School on November 12th. He was kept in handcuffs even after he was calm. I can't believe that it's happened to my son. She tells the I-Team she received a call that morning. Her son bit a school aide and a student. Matthew has autism and is nonverbal. Uh, Matthew, you okay? Of course he's not okay. He can talk. He can say what he's feeling. Where is your puzzle, Matthew? Olivia says while Matthew is 14 years old, he has the mental capacity of a two or three year old and Let just stopped wearing diapers hi. last year. It's hard to see our children like that, treated like the delinquents. She says Matthew is supposed to have the same one on one aid, but that day it appears he was with someone else. She blames a lack of training for school staff and says there are other ways to handle a child with special needs in crisis without handcuffs. Two grown men it took to restrain this young man. If you think one woman by herself, you need to rethink the situation. This isn't the first time the family has had trouble with the Clark County School District. Years old, and you know that he was abused four years ago, and that's why he's like that. Last February, the school board approved a settlement for three families, including Olivia's, to split a $1.2 million settlement after CCSD mishandled reported abuse by a teacher in 2015. The teacher pleaded guilty to a battery charge Records show Matthew was one of his victims. For me as a mom, I don't like the system. It's a system which she believes has failed her family more than once. It's like a he's a delinquent. You see, this is our system. My respect to all the professional. Thank you to the police. Thank you to the teachers. Thank you. But I don't think that's the way. A CCSD spokesman says the district is aware of the matter and looking into it. He also tells us school police officers use handcuffs on a case by case basis, depending on the safety needs of the situation. And he says school staff completes training for de-escalation techniques. Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. Final note here, the I-Team story on the family settlement with CCSD aired on November 11th. This incident in which Matthew was handcuffed happened the following day. Matthew is currently being homeschooled.